Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Wimplex Century and welcome to a new video in my video series What to Buy. So one of the questions I get asked most frequently is what should I buy? A MacBook Air or MacBook Pro? So this is exactly what we're going to take a look at today and we'll take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages for each device and then see what's the best solution for you. So let's start off with the MacBook Pro and one of the nice features that I highly appreciate about the MacBook Pro range is actually the battery life indicator that you will find on the left side. So if you're about to leave the house and just quickly have to check if you need to take a charge or not, this is a perfect feature, especially since you don't even have to turn on the machine for that. Next up, the MacBook Pro definitely feels a lot more solid than for example a MacBook Air just because it's a little bit thicker, it has a little bit more heft to it and just doesn't really feel like you'll break it easily. Another feature is the DVD drive and while optical media might be dead for some, there's still a lot of people that still use it to for example import CDs to your iTunes library or also just watch a movie at an airport or something like that. So definitely a nice feature but I think the biggest advantage of the MacBook Pro is actually that you still have a lot of room to upgrade. So you can upgrade the RAM on your own, you can switch the hard drive to an SSD and those are great features that are missing on for example the MacBook Air or also the Retina MacBook Pro. So now let's talk about the cons of the MacBook Pro. Number one definitely has to be the screen for me. With a resolution of 1280 x 800 some of us actually have smartphones in our pockets that have a higher resolution screen than this MacBook Pro, especially for a device with a Pro in the name. This really is an outdated screen and so not the best, also very reflective. Another big downfall of the MacBook Pro is definitely the lack of an SSD or also flash storage. Now while this means you definitely get higher capacities like 500 gigabytes, this is really slow and I think in a year of 2013 we shouldn't really bother with regular hard drives anymore where SSD or flash storage in general is the way to go. Now let's continue with the MacBook Air. One of the biggest features is definitely the flash storage which makes everyday computing a breeze because just applications start a lot faster, you can boot up the machine a lot faster and I think this has a bigger impact than for example a faster processor at least on everyday computing. Next up you'll also definitely get a thinner machine that's a lot lighter and so better and easier to carry around. Also you'll have a higher screen resolution of 1440 x 900 which is actually the same resolution as you'll find on the regular 15 inch MacBook Pro. So definitely a screen advantage right there but not only that you'll also have less glare because there isn't a glass layer on top of the screen. So talking about the disadvantages of the MacBook Air, after owning an 11 inch and a couple of 13 inch MacBook Airs there's actually just one thing that I really miss on them and that's that you can't upgrade it at all by yourself. So if you order it with 4GB of RAM then you're stuck with it for the whole time that you have this machine and so you really have to customize it the way you want when you're ordering it. Because for example if you do some video editing or also some photo editing which is definitely possible with the processor that's inside then you definitely have to go and get 8 gigabytes of RAM and it's pretty expensive if you go to Apple. So that's a major downfall that you can't do anything yourself, not even the RAM. I mean, at least the RAM should be user upgradable in my opinion. So to sum it up, what's the perfect machine for you? Well, this really depends on your requirements. First of all, if you're looking for a desktop replacement and if you just want to have a laptop that's an, pretty much an all-in-one for you, so if it does all your computing needs, then I think the MacBook Pro is the better choice because you can just upgrade it along the way. So you can just buy the baseline right now, it's not an issue at all, and you can just, if you see that 4GB of RAM isn't enough, just go to Amazon and buy 8GB or 16GB, it's really easy to upgrade and so you can just really customize it along the way, how you like it, and so it can pretty much like grow with you. And then again, the MacBook Air, at least in my opinion, is still more like a secondary machine. So if you, for example, already have an iMac, then the MacBook Air is a fantastic machine. It really feels fast due to the flash storage and also just a beautiful machine to look at. And it pretty much competes with the performance of the MacBook Pro without any issues at all. But as I said, you have to invest a little bit more upfront, for example, to upgrade the RAM from 4GB to 8GB, which I highly recommend because the 4GB of RAM on my MacBook Pro are horrific, barely usable at all. So I think 8GB is the way to go. And so you definitely have to spend a little bit more money upfront. Besides that, if you're traveling a lot, also the MacBook Air is the way to go. Or if you're a student who wants to take notes in class, then I think also the MacBook Air is the way better choice. So I hope this video helped you out. 
If you have any specific requirements at what machine you're looking for, then definitely leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to find the best machine with you guys. Besides that, just let me know what you think is the better choice, MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. And also, if you want to see other videos in the series, for example, comparing the MacBook Pro Retina to the MacBook Pro 13 inch, for example. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see my next video. Please also make sure to hit the subscribe button wherever it is. Thanks again. See you next time.